Welcome to Brainstorming America. Ken Rollins here and John Merrill. John, good to see you, buddy. Thank you, Ken. Uh, you've been traveling all over. I said today I think you was in locally. Yes, sir. You didn't come in from Tuscaloosa or somewhere. So good to see you. Thank you. Uh, how are things going down at Wagner, by it's the way? It's going great. You're kind to ask. And, yeah. of course, I uh, have a uh, couple of trips lined up uh, with some work that I'm doing. One in uh, Puerto Rico with the National Association of Secretaries of State. Uh, south of Heflin, uh, right? Just a little bit south of Heflin. And then um, also going to Milwaukee, Wisconsin for the Republican National Convention in a couple of weeks. Yeah. But that's not Wisconsin. That's Wisconsin. That's right. Wisconsin. That's right. Doesn't have a W in it. Wisconsin. That's right. <laughs> okay. Well, it's good to see you again. Thank you for uh, One of the things, subjects I want to bring up first is something that everybody that's watching us should be aware and paying attention to. I don't mean just be aware of it, but pay attention to what goes on in the future. Vladimir Putin played a visit to little Kim Rocket Man in North Korea. There's two people that are a threat to the world, not just a threat to Ukraine or someplace. They are a threat to the world, both of them. Both of them are nuclear war countries. And they're doing it in a rush. Seems like they want to do it before Biden gets out of office because they ain't gonna do it with Trump. Trump will pop a cap on them. <laughs> they know it. So, last week, Vladimir Putin flew somewhere to meet Kim, and Kim had to fly there. He don't fly, but he did for this. So it's really, really something important going on with two nuclear world or countries in this United States. Now, they're also friends with Iran. So when you get those players, if you're dealing with a gang in the city. It's not a good day for the free it's world, not, brother. It's not. It's scary to me because they are playing with, with the big stuff, not the little stuff. Uh, any one of them can pull a trigger and wipe out a good part of this country that you and I tra treasure. And, and nobody's paying attention. Right now, our president has been cooped up for a week trying to figure out how to take on <laughs> that bad guy named Donald Trump. Let everything go. Let the, let the North Korea do what they want to do. Iran is building up for that nuclear weapon. I'm told, and you're told, and all of us are told, they are this close to having those nuclear weapons. You and I know that if they're this close, they got them. Because we, I remember when a fellow named Jefferson Clinton, Bill, let's see, Bill Clinton said, we will never allow North Korea to have nuclear weapons. Duh. Last I heard, they do have them. We're not going to allow them to have them. I heard Joe Biden say, we'll never allow Iran to have. I've heard George Bush say that. And I've heard Donald Trump say that. The only one that they paid any attention to was Donald Trump, and they did it because they think this guy is such a... Well, they're afraid of him. Absolutely. And with fear, sometimes comes respect that you don't receive other ways. You know who said that? Donald, Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan put out the Star Wars and all that stuff. Some existed, some didn't exist. But if you think that you got a weapon to shoot at me and all I gotta do is go poof and your bullet falls down to the ground, your bullet's no good. You don't have a weapon. Ronald Reagan convinced the world that his Star Wars was so effective that anywhere in the world, if you fired upon America, we had a way to shoot it down. It'll never make it to America. So you got no weapon. If you can't, if your weapon won't reach us, 
What do you got? The Iron Dome, as you will recall, when they were talking about protective mechanisms that were in place to protect our country and to protect our people. And the bottom line in the final analysis is this. A president's job and responsibility, and albeit his duty, is to protect the people of the United States of America. And when that individual is charged with that particular duty, they have to execute it. They have to make sure that they are ensuring that our people in all 50 states and our territories will be protected from all enemies, foreign and domestic. But on, from the school grounds of Helpland to the world that we live in, if you know that the, your enemy is a paper tiger, you don't have much to worry about. That's exactly right. And people are looking at our country as being a paper tiger. We don't have a president that will stand up. We saw that in Afghanistan. We saw that in Iran. We, t we left Iran broke. Donald Trump left them broke. They was getting 80 barrels of oil a day. Now they're getting 3 million. Hello? From 80 barrels to 3 million. From Donald Trump to Joe Biden. They got all the money they need. Vladimir Putin couldn't do nothing because the oil line that was under the ocean to Europe, Donald Trump said he'd never let them put nothing through it. You can have it all you want, but you're not going to use it. And they didn't, not under his stewardship. As soon as Biden got in there, they opened it up. Now everybody, including America, Folks, if you knew how many million dollars today we're going to give Russia for the oil coming through that line under the ocean because Joe Biden allowed it to happen. We're not giving Russia any of this money, but we are going to pay some of our bills. We'll see you back right after this break. And welcome back to Brainstorming America. Forgot where I was for a moment. I'm Ken Rawlins, and I'm here with John Merrill. John. Well, I had another question for you. You're going to love this one. Let me ask you a question. Did you play basketball when you was a young man? Yes, sir. You should have because I know you were eight feet. <laughs> you were, I'm 6'4 now. I wasn't hardly that tall when I was in high school. but You know how tall you are then when you first wake up in the morning? You're six foot, and a half, five, six foot five and a half. But once you stand up, you lose an inch and a half. Is that right? Yes, sir. I know that for a fact. That, no, you lose a, you lose a half inch. Uh, a pilot. They named Fort Rooker after a friend of mine named Novacell. Right. Mike Novacell. Mike was so short. Him and Eli was the same height, Eli Henderson. And I got pictures of them two standing together here. And Eli fixed him up for a date. His wife died years ago and fixed him up with a lady to go out to dinner with. She was six foot seven. Wow. Yeah. Looking down at little Mike Novosel, he was so embarrassed. He said, the woman way up there, like, what's the weather up there like, honey child? Anyhow, <laughs> what was I talking, going to talk about? Oh. Well, you were asking about basketball. And basketball. That's right. Absolutely. And Mike, I don't even know where this got to do with Mike Short, but that might be when I'm talking about basketball. But anyhow. I figured you played basketball. What is the number one basketball story today? The number one basketball story in 2023 and 2024 and continuing today is Caitlin Clark, who went to the University of Iowa and now plays for the uh, Indiana Fever basketball team in the WNBA. One little old girl, not a little girl. She's kind of tall for her side, but She's not one of the hovering over type. They're no. a lot taller than her. No. But the skills but she's of the all time girl. leading scorer in the history of college basketball and especially in women's basketball and is recognized by most people as one of the premier basketball yeah. players in the world. I've seen video of stuff with you at University of Alabama basketball and others and you standing with some world renowned uh, Hall of Fame. Basketball players. I knew you when you 
like basketball. I particularly never cared for it. I was always football, baseball stuff. But I started watching this because of her. Sure. I love the story of the background from her. But then I see the view, the view that Sonny Holston on there said the reason she's getting the attention is because she's a white girl and pretty and tall. She said there's a, a class for tallness. There's a class for beauty. Do you fit in those? No, I <laughs> but gave all that there had nothing to do with her skills. But let me tell you. Well, let me say this. You know, they're entitled to their opinion, but they're not entitled to their own facts. And the facts are that she has been the best basketball player in the world Ever. for the last two years. As far as women are concerned, there's never been one that's been greater than her. And no matter how good looking you are, no matter how tall you are, that cannot allow the ball to go in the hoop to count as two points or one point or three points. That one, only happens when you are able to score, and apparently she's done that very proficiently. One of the girls that was mad from the sky, the Chicago sky, said, but what does she do? All she does is score three-pointers. Uh, I mean, that's what she said. What is she other than scoring three-pointers? Well, she scored two-pointers and one-pointer, and she does a lot of rebounds and all the other things. That's right. Assist and allowing she's, other people to score. And she smiles while she's assisting her when her teammates make a score. Whatever. Absolutely. So she's a team player. High score I've ever seen. And I never even heard the words WNBA. I mean, I probably had. I didn't pay attention to them. Right. Now, they were traveling. They had to go to the, to the airport. Get a plane, ticket just like you and I would. Right. You ain't got a plane, have you? No, sir. Yet. No, sir. Uh, but now, because of Caitlin Clark, they fly in a charter plane. That's right. Not just her, but all of her. Not just her, but her what she's playing against. That's right. All of those Chicago players are getting to fly charter because of Caitlin Clark on that other flight that went out. This girl is phenomenal, and I hope she just keeps on going. They left her off for the Olympic the, team. The Olympic team. I got reservations about that. I mean, the Olympic team has won for the last seven years. They've not needed, and I don't think today they need Caitlin Clark. But when you got somebody like Brittany Griner that was in prison in Russia. Right. Who is definitely not for America and not an American. And Neil's one of the national anthem is played. Exactly, not promoting American values. Absolutely. They put her on there for one reason or another, and I'm sure they got 15. But that's the part that makes things like that a great story. You get a foul taste in your mouth when Americans are going to watch the Olympics. I won't. But if Caitlin Clark was on there, I would put away playing my little dog. Sure. You, and watch Tucker, the women's basketball team play Tucker would with other to, teams from around the world. Tucker would have to get them little balls and go somewhere else That's to right. play. I ain't playing with it. I'm serious, but we are, we are very lucky to have a young lady with her. And I think the way she has handled that situation, she's got, if you see a Wilson basketball, You'll see Caitlin Clark's picture on it. She has got the endorsements. She's going to just do bigger and better things as we do. But she's not let it go to her head. That's exactly right. And we're glad that you're not letting Brainstorm in America go to your head. But we do hope that you'll come back and join us for the final segment of the 64th episode of Brainstorm in America right after this break. Welcome back to Brainstorming America. Ken Rollins and... We here with John Merrill. John, uh, when uh, I just noticed something the other day, a lot of hoopla in Washington D.C. that the COVID-19 virus was, in fact, from the Wuhan lab. Sure, it was. Did you ever doubt it? No, sir. A lot of people did. Yes, sir. 
a lot of people argued it wasn't and lied in the Congress. Uh, named Fauci, Dr. Fauci, swore that it never came from the lab. Gain of function, remember that? With uh, what's that senator from Kentucky? Uh, Rand Paul. Rand Paul. He tried to make a fool out of Rand Paul. But the thing is, Rand Paul's a doctor also. Yes, he is. And so Fauci wasn't able to buffalo him like he does others. And one reason I think he went on to retire early. But the, the Wuhan lab, folks, what they do, they take a virus. Let's say they take the uh, Russian flu, the virus that we used to have called a Russian flu, probably still got some of it. They put it over in a vial and they put some other viruses with it to try to make it the worst flu that could ever happen. Why would they do that? So that they can find a a cure for that virus that they created. You can't you can't cure a bad virus unless you got a bad virus. I'm doing that as simple as I can because I am so smart when it comes to you believe that does You're no. smart about a lot of things. It, the stuff was to gain a function was to make that virus, the common virus they had, if there was such a thing, more volatile, more dangerous to the human people so that they could get over here on the other side and find a cure for it and be the heroes of the world because they got a virus over here that endangering America and Europe in Russia, all over they got this bad virus, but we have a cure for it. China has a cure for this thing. So we'll sell you this serum that we developed to cure a virus that's in our lab. Well, somebody in the lab, who know who, who know who went out the door with that virus and expose it to the world. Mm. It can be done several ways, by mail, by plane, by different various ways. But somebody from that lab allowed this chemical to go out. They may have had some on several products leaving that lab, was unaware that it was on there. But it got into the world. It got into where I was at because I had it. I had COVID. So you got you got the head of the NIH, Fauci, arguing that it never was there, that it never came out of that lab, that it was just something that just sprung up out of the in the atmosphere, or from some bats, bats that took it, flew it through the atmosphere. He said, "Are the bats, or it could be a normal." Variation that they went through all this, but not the Wuhan lab. Well, that's been proven untrue. And the other part of it that's important to you is our dollars, our tax dollars, was used to pay billions of dollars to that lab. What do you think about all that, man? I think it's really, really sad that we allowed one person to be able to actually direct the entire nation's thinking about a particular health issue without listening to or observing the information that was being provided by other sources and basically going against the entire medical community on what should be done and what was appropriate to be done during this particular challenge that we all faced. And I think it also shows how ill-prepared we were at that time to accept that information and to accurately process that information so we knew how to respond. And I say that to the expertise that you bring to the table. You used to be the Secretary of State. You were responsible for giving us good, bad, or indifferent information regarding voting and other things. Shame on you if you had been out there telling us lies like that. Causing Absolutely. Us 
you know, it, that affects this country one way or another. And in this case, it was our health. Yes, sir. People were dying as a result of that that. Uh, and virus. people are still afraid and concerned today Absolutely. because of the unknown. And you go overseas, you'll find out a lot more. They are having, well, I was watching a thing the other day in London where a guy wouldn't let people in his restaurant because he didn't have a mask. Still going on today. Let me get something here before they got to go to another one. Uh, this is in your battle way, guys, the sec former Secretary of State. The, the Democrats started voting in September. How does that work? Is that well, let me say vote? this now. In Alabama, we start voting in September as well. It's called the absentee process. And you can do absentee voting by mail, or you can do absentee voting in person. But one of the things that other states are doing around the union is having in-person voting at your polling place or at an assigned polling place for a period of up to 60 days. This enables the voter to go to that particular location and to vote whenever they choose to at an assigned time at an assigned location. Alabama does not offer that as a service. We don't feel it's necessary. Alabama actually leads the nation in in-person voting on election day. We take a lot of pride in that. Alabama, when I was in office after the 2020 and after the 2022 elections was recognized as the number one state in the union for election transparency, election accountability. Uh, we were the best state in the union for election administration. It's not like that today because you have to continue to work hard each and every day in order to secure that. But Alabama has led the nation for the last several years in election integrity, transparency, and accountability. I like that word, the integrity, but one of the things I want to make sure everybody get, you'll hear people talking about over in Georgia they couldn't allow people to bring water in the line. What that was, they, they were people out there from one campaign wanting to give Gatorade, cookies, and whatever to the people with their their little sign on it, a bottle of water that had their their campaign stickers on it. And we promise you, if you'll come back and join us again, at some point we'll have some water with our name on it to give to you for Brainstorming America. Thanks for joining us this week. We'll see you again next time.